What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna talk about testing and software engineering, and more specifically, how important testing really is and whether or not you absolutely have to write tests when you're writing software. But first, check this out. Isn't this cool? All right, so how important is testing in software engineering? And here we're talking about tests that you write with code, like unit tests, integration tests. We're not talking about manual testing where a human being, the developer, or anybody else actually manually tests the software. And so the really critical question that we wanna answer here is do you have to write tests whenever you are writing software? And the answer is, it's pretty obvious, Come on, I'll let you answer. I'm waiting. The obvious answer is, it depends. Aha, I tricked some of you. I know some of you thought it was gonna be, you have to write tests all the time. And by the way, do you hear that? That's the sound of over 9,000 Google engineers crying in harmony thinking, how could one of us say that writing tests isn't absolutely mandatory? Well, I'll tell you why. To understand why it's not always mandatory to write tests in software, to understand why it depends is the obvious answer, we have to understand what the purpose of writing tests is. So what is the purpose of writing tests? Well, there are really two goals that writing tests has. The first goal is to presumably reduce the number of bugs that find their way into your code base and into the feature or product that you're shipping. Wait a second, I just realized the answer to whether or not you should write tests when you're developing software isn't it depends, it's definitely no. Don't write tests, just don't write buggy software. Why didn't I think of this before? Is this like a moment of ingenuity? And the second goal is to presumably reduce the amount of time that human beings, like the developers of the software or other people in your organization, are gonna spend manually testing the software. Because you can imagine that you're gonna have to do some sort of manual testing if you don't have written tests, unless you wanna ship your product blindly, which would not be advisable. But so that's the second goal, to presumably save some time to some people in your organization who are gonna be testing your feature. And so here you might be thinking, well, Clement, isn't the answer then obvious? You should always write tests because clearly the two benefits of testing are really great. They're very beneficial. Not quite. Because you see the key word in those two benefits of testing is presumably. You will presumably reduce the number of bugs in your application. You will presumably save people in your organization time from manual testing, but not necessarily. Why not necessarily? Because writing tests isn't easy. Writing good tests that are going to capture all the potential bugs in your software isn't easy and is borderline impossible. When I was at Google and I worked worked on the front end of Google Cloud Platform, we had to write all kinds of tests, unit tests, screenshot tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, all kinds of tests for any feature that we developed, and there were still bugs that found their way into the code base. And then as far as reducing the time that you're gonna spend manual testing, that's not necessarily gonna happen either. There are some parts of your software that you're never gonna feel fully comfortable not manually testing, even if you have the most robust testing systems in place. As an example on AlgoExpert, and of course if you're preparing for coding interviews, check out AlgoExpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. We have tests on a few of our services, but even with those tests, whenever we deploy big changes to production, to our user interface, or to some of our backend services, we always do some sanity manual testing, especially for some of the critical flows like purchasing the product, to make sure that the product or service is working correctly. So the point is, writing tests won't necessarily save you that much time from manual testing because you might still continue manual testing because you just don't trust the machines. 
and because, quite frankly, there are certain things that machines just can't really catch, but that humans can catch. Another example here is at Google, on Google Cloud Platform Frontend, we would always do manual testing on top of the rigorous tests that we had. We would do big bug hunts before launching features, and we would always catch all kinds of issues that tests just couldn't catch. But okay, I know what you're thinking. Writing tests still has some potential benefit, even though it's not necessarily going to be the be-all, end-all thing that saves your software from all bugs and makes your engineers super productive. It can do that. Therefore, it must be worth it. Once again, not quite. Why? Because writing tests is not free. Writing tests has a cost. What's the cost of writing tests? Time. Engineering time. Engineering resources. Like I said before, writing good tests that actually catch a lot of bugs or prevent bugs from going to production is already no easy feat. But on top of that, writing good tests takes a lot of time. As an example, at Google, on Google Cloud Platform Frontend, I kid you not when I say that for a given feature, writing tests for that feature on top of developing it would quite literally double, if not even triple, the time that it took to build that feature out. And this is for the simple reason that testing is difficult. Writing tests often involves using some kind of special framework. You have to mock services that can sometimes break. Sometimes you have to debug tests, and debugging them is a nightmare. The more powerful and useful your tests are, the more difficult they become to write and to set up and to debug, typically at least. For instance, if we're talking about front-end tests, on the front-end there are a lot of different kinds of tests that you can write. Two common types of front-end tests are unit tests, where you just test some function or maybe some component in your application, like a button, for instance. Testing a simple button is likely not going to be too difficult. You can make sure that when you click the button, some callback that you pass to the button component gets called. You can make sure that the button displays the correct text, but maybe that test isn't going to be super useful. On the other hand, there are also end-to-end -end tests, or some people might call them integration tests. These are tests where you're actually going to use some special software that opens up your browser, let's say Chrome, Google Chrome, and that is actually going to replicate what a user would do on your website. Like it's going to navigate to pages, it's going to click on buttons, it's going to type in input fields. That's going to be a much more powerful test that might be a lot more useful and actually save you some of the manual testing later on, but that's going to be a lot more difficult to set up because it's just a tougher test to write. You have to get the whole framework working, you have to make sure that it's hooking up to the right backend. Depending on what services you're testing, you may not want to be using real production data. It's just going to be a lot more complicated, and it's going to take a lot more time, and that is going to be costly. The point that I'm trying to make is that writing tests takes time. Writing tests has a cost, and when an activity has a cost, doing that activity inherently comes with a trade-off. And when something comes with a trade-off, that's when you get to that it depends answer that I gave earlier. Is the trade-off of having your engineers spend more of their time to potentially reduce the number of bugs that make it to production, or potentially reduce the amount of manual testing that they or other people will do? Maybe, but it depends. It depends on the type of software that you're building, the product that that software is for, it depends on how fast you want to get that product in the market, it depends on a lot of things. So what I would advise any engineer or manager or person running a company who's debating whether or not writing tests for their software is worth it, what I would advise them to ask themselves is, is that trade-off worth it? So for instance, if you're developing the kind of software where one bug finding its way to production is unacceptable, like for instance, the type of software that can put lives at risk, software for airplanes, software for medical devices, then in those cases, that trade-off is probably worth it, and you should probably write tests. Similarly, if you're writing software for something that maybe doesn't put lives at risk, but is still critical, like for instance, software that deals with users' money, or software that deals with 
legal-related issues, like compliance issues. At Google, I worked on a feature that had to do with geofencing, which basically deals with what region in the world certain data is stored in. And that seems kind of trivial at first, but it actually has really critical compliance ramifications where for certain parts of the world or certain organizations, storing data in some regions is really bad and can cost them millions of dollars or can be illegal or all kinds of things. So for those types of software, like bank account software or crypto exchange software, those kinds of software, that trade-off is probably also worth it. Write tests. But if your software is just a social media app, like let's say Instagram, the core user-facing functionality of Instagram, forget about Instagram ads or Instagram commerce, just take the home page of Instagram, that's not necessarily hypercritical. Now that's not to say that Instagram shouldn't have tests. I'm just saying that might be an example where you might say, hey, maybe we value shipping some product really fast overwriting the most robust tests. And so to give you an example on Algo Expert, we have some parts of our services that have a lot of testing and others that have very little if any testing. Any part of our backend that involves writing to a database we test. So we actually use real databases or real test databases and we test those functionalities. On our front end code, we test purchasing functionality. We test some really critical functionality on the questions list of Algo Expert. But beyond that, it hasn't really made that much sense for us to invest a ton of time in testing. Keep in mind that we're also a very small company right now, and so we have a lot of context on the code base. We're able to move in our code base very fast. At large companies like Google, where you've got hundreds if not thousands of engineers working on the same services or sibling services at once, and new engineers coming, old engineers leaving, you need a lot more rigor in your testing to make sure that things just operate smoothly. Smoothly. But so on Algo Expert right now, as we grow, we're certainly thinking about testing a lot, but we're also being very intentional with the parts of our code bases that we test. Because that trade-off of time for those potential benefits of writing tests is a really important trade-off for us to think about. And it's not a no-brainer decision like it might be if we were writing software for, let's say, a medical device that is a life or death situation. That's all I've got for you about testing. And its importance in software engineering. I hope that you found this video informative. Let me know what you think about testing in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Do it now. Don't delay it. Right now. Press that red button right now. And while you're at it, smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.